Hi, this is Dr. Francis Price, and this is a case of DSEC, Decime Stripping Endothelial Keroplasty, combined with cataract surgery. And we're going to make a small incision here in the skin covering or conjunctiva right at the edge of the cornea. This case is being done for Fuchs dystrophy, a hereditary condition that causes the cornea to become hazy or cloudy. Sometimes it even gets blisters on it afterwards. It can also be used for other situations where the cornea loses its clarity due to the fact that the endothelial cells or inner layer of cells have become dysfunctional or been damaged. Now we're going to do a scleral tunnel here which is a little bit short and that's because we're doing it combined with cataract surgery. I'll typically do a longer scleral tunnel if there's no cataract surgery involved. So we made first a partial thickness incision perpendicular to the surface and then at the base of that incision we're doing a lamellar dissection that is parallel to the surface and this takes the dissection into clear cornea. Typically we'll make these incisions just a little bit longer so that they're totally self-sealing and we don't have to worry about placing any sutures in the wound to make it firm. But if we combine it with a cataract surgery, we tend to make it a little bit shorter. We're now making a stab incision in the eye, and this will facilitate our cataract surgery. We injected some anesthetic into the anterior chamber, and then we irrigated some gooey material called viscoelastic, and that protects the back surface of the cornea normally, although we're going to replace it here but it also maintains the shape of the eye so that we can do some of the other procedures such as this. When we go in and we're going to actually tear an opening like a manhole cover into the top of the membrane or capsule that su surrounds the crystalline lens. Now when the lens becomes cloudy it's called a cataract. And so what we're going to do is remove the cataract from this eye before we actually fix the cornea. Now we've taken that tear all the way around. It's continuous and it's round. We're injecting fluid between the capsule and the rest of the cataract and that causes those layers to separate. This is an ultrasonic tip or phaco tip that we're using to go into the eye and with ultrasound it actually breaks up the lens material and we have fluid going into the eye through the uh, purple tubing and sucked out through the center of the metal one. And here we're using the ultrasound to remove the lens material. After that we'll go in with a probe that is just irrigation and aspiration and we'll use that to basically suck out the softer outer part of the cataract, the cortex. Once again we'll fill it all with the viscoelastic to maintain the shape and we're going to inject a plastic lens and that goes into the membrane or bag that we left from the cataract. So the plastic lens is much thinner than what the natural lens had been. This is a donor cornea. It's already been sliced with a microkeratome separating the anterior two-thirds from the posterior one-third of the cornea. That anterior cap was placed back on the cornea. Now the entire thing is placed on the cutting block and it's punched with the tree fine. Usually this is the same tree fine that we marked the epithelium of the patient with. The purple marks just mark the edge of where the microkeratome sectioned the cornea. 
to make sure that when we trefine it with the round blade we're actually within the area that the microkeratome shaved the cornea. We're now marking the cornea with the trefine. That'll tell us how big the cornea is going to be. And so we'll custom treat this based upon the patient's size of their eye and the size of the donor. So typically with the SEC, when I go around and score like this with the reverse Prysinski hook, I'm breaking Decimay's membrane and I'm doing it a little bit inside of the mark that I made with the tree fine so that the donor will cover up areas all the way around that have not been stripped Now we're catching the edge of the membrane, Decimay's membrane, with the hook in the area that we scored it. And then we're just going to pull it off the back of the cornea. And for Fuchs dystrophy, this is the part that has the guttata, or little bumps, on the back of the cornea. They cause the distortion of lights, halos, and glare, and they cause difficulty seeing detail. I've placed the INA tip back in the eye and this time we're going to remove not part of the cataract but the jelly material that we put into the eye. First that which is behind the lens implant and then all the rest in the front part of the eye. Now I'm going to vacuum off any of the jelly material, the viscoelastic from the back of the cornea. And that's so we don't get haze uh, postoperatively. We're making an incision opposite the main incision. We're going to extend the main incision for its full width. We only had it partially opened into the eye up till now. This is the donor cornea. It's already been sectioned with a microkeratome, basically shaving or slicing off the anterior two-thirds from the posterior one-third. We've put a little viscoelastic on the side of the cornea that's going to be transplanted. That's to protect the endothelial cells, the cells we worry about with this surgery. And when I say that separating the anterior two-thirds from the posterior third, it's actually much thinner than that on the posterior surface. We're making these thinner all the time. Now this is being loaded into a device called a Boussin glide, and it causes the tissue to curl over on itself. And we do this so that when it's pulled into the eye, the endothelial cells, the part we're worried about transplanting, are protected from being damaged or sheared by the wound as it's pulled in. So we'll pull this into the eye. It's going to start to unfold. And I don't let go of it until it unfolds all the way, and I know which way that it is oriented. Now we're going to put a little air under the donor tissue and that will push the donor up in place against the recipient or patient's eye. We now use a Lindstrom LASIK roller to move it into position. And that's so we don't have to go in with an instrument and damage any of the endothelial cells by trying to move it. And we're now making small incisions through the patient's cornea down to the donor. And you can see little bits of fluid coming out. And sometimes in patients there's a fluid collection there. And we make these drainage incisions to remove that fluid. At this point we can check the pressure make sure it's firm enough we're just milking out a little bit more fluid in the interface but you can see how clear the cornea is and patients typically do very nicely with this if we think there's still extra fluid trapped I'll use a little silhouette device a silhouette of the diamond and go in and reopen the incisions and drain out fluid a little bit further
Now in this particular case the wound was quite firm and sturdy so we actually did not have to put any sutures in. We're using cautery to actually weld the two edges of the conjunctiva back together so this was done without sutures. Thank you.